Fabulous. It's great to be here and I've so enjoyed some of the presentations so far. So I'm honoured to be a part of this. Um, since we last spoke, Antonia, I put together a kind of um, a presentation that will hopefully uh, shed some light and be explanatory in terms of uh, how the souvenir project came about. If there ever is any real understanding of, you know, art projects and uh, and and how it grew. Um, I mean, obviously, I've kind of focused this around textiles and the idea of kind of weaving and spinning, conjuring up stories and pulling threads from the past that um, seem nourishing and potentially useful for conjuring futures. Um, obviously, I'm from Belfast. My mother was a weaver in the Midlands of Ireland. And my father was actually tasked with the mechanization of looms across Ireland. And that's how they met. So I'm literally the wharf and the weft of the North and South and all of that fine tradition of growing flax and spinning and weaving linen, which resulted in us having an aircraft industry. I mean, you kind of think of fabric as such a flimsy, um, inconsequential thing, but it's actually a very important, and it, historically, it was a massively important thing. From that simple plant, the flax, grew the largest rope industry in the world. You know, we had ties literally to every ship across the planet. And when you think of where we are now in 2022, and the, I, that concept of the local and the global uh, kind of speaking to each other, I've, I see that in the past and I, I, I see it as such an important perspective to take, certainly for, as an artist, as someone who regards themselves as something of an activist, it's, it's so, so kind of um, important to engage intensely personally in the local and that kind of springs to the universal. So um, con uh, continuing in the face of disruption, I suppose that's a sentence nearly that you could say was covers the last 30 years or the, the, the kind of the 30 years of my life working in Belfast. Um, and my title when I worked uh, in it, on the fellowship in Trinity was a disruptor the idea of kind of provoking or kind of like causing, you know, being the grit in the oyster and, and kind of working across disciplines, which is very interesting because like lots of conversations have collision points and very, very kind of exciting um, potential when you kind of mix people up and generally confuse them. So I'm going to, without further ado, start this presentation. It'll all work seamlessly, I hope. Let's have a look. Um, now, how do I share my screen with you? Um, okay, I'm going to play this. Oops, it's in the wrong. I want, to, I want to go back. There we go. This is the first image. Are you seeing that without the black bar in front of it or not? I don't. Are you seeing that picture with a black bar on it? Or no, not? we have just a white screen. You've just a white screen, okay. Basically, you have to go back. You first have to pull up your presentation. It needs to be on your desk. And then you uh, share screen, and then you can pull it up. I'm getting nothing here now. You have to start again, I see. Philip knows how to do this better. Just come out of share screen, Rita. Come out of share I can't, screen. Come on, I, I can't find the little cursor. Oh, then. Okay. So how do I come out of stop? Of share? Just go back. Use the back button. But this is, there we yeah. go. Is that now, working? Well done. Now, no. So now just pull, your, pull, pull up on your desktop what you want to share with us. Is the image on your desktop? Yeah, the image, okay. can you see it now? It's, is no, no, it, no. Can you see a green no. building? 
only you can see the image at the moment. So now that it's on your screen, now click the share screen button again. And then when you choose- I, I, can't, I can't find the cursor. Oh, you need to find the cursor to do it. How do I get the cursor? You, How do I find the cursor? Do you have a trackpad or do you have a, a mouse? No, I've, got a, I've got a trackpad, just not. Um, okay, let me see if it, no. I don't know. Oh, sorry about this. That's no problem. What we could do if you if you wanted, if you preferred, we could do you want to should we move on to the next speaker and come back to you? Or do you want a little time? Hold on a second. I think I've got it now. Oh, um, okay. what am I doing? So now uh, that, now that the image is on your screen, now you can yeah. you click the share screen again and choose, you know, your desk share screen. You should be able to see it. The way you did it the last time. Keynote, okay. Share. Yes, perfect. Now click. That's perfect. Now click on the image. Now, what do you see? see? We can see all, all the images. images. So now you just have to put okay. it on the big screen. You, got, you see a green building? Yes, that's yeah. perfect. Okay, so I'm starting at the studio. Um, I have a, I, I um, have a studio on the border between north and south in no man's land, which is a kind of fascinating place to work as an artist. Um, I'm, I'm kind of one foot in the north, one foot in the south, in a kind of a neither here nor there confusion of a space. And that I think is the best place for me anyway, uh, to have creative thoughts. Um, my mother was a wonderful knitter. Um, this is a little, a painting called Gansey. So the idea of kind of, you know, uh, looking at, the, the kind of the, the work that, that that women did in the past, like the, all of those crafts of homemaking, knitting, sewing, these were things that I've kind of rec more recently uh, delved into. I mean, I trained as a painter, fine art, printmaking, drawing is my first kind of love and my the way I kind of explore ideas, but um, I, I make work in the studio based for gal uh, you know focused for galleries, but I also um, make projects where I engage with um, community groups of people in community and that way I kind of get a balance of not being so isolated and dwelling in solitude, but the, the it kind of feeds one one way of working into another. So anyway, um, this is a, a little iron sweater that my mother knit for my son. Um, this is a painting, big painting, six foot by four, of a raincoat that I bought in an auction. At least I thought it was a raincoat. Turns out this is an Ulster, which is a rubberized linen waterproof, the sort of coat that Podrick Pierce wore when he took the surrender after the rebellion in 1916. So there, I, I have a whole range of garments. I could do a talk all by myself just on the garments that I've worked on over the last uh, 25, 30 years. But I kind of figured I'd give you, I'd hop around a little bit and give you more of a flavor of what I've um, been getting up to. Um, this is a big painting called De Valera's Daughters. And De Valera was the first kind of president Taoiseach of Ireland after the rebellion and this is like a, a birthing sheet a laying out sheet it's almost like an Antarctic wasteland but it's all being kind of ironed and pulled and played with by women because women were the, were, uh, the weavers women were the, the, the people who worked in the mills of Belfast and the, the there was a nickname of Millies were the kind of um, the young women who went in their droves in the morning into the shirt into the factories to make this wonderful cloth um out of this um kind of unity of purpose people worked together but they were divided in in their domestic and um their their their, their housing situations this is a series of uh, remnants of flags that i took down off lampposts in belfast and I created a whole series of little houses from the Union Jacks and I filled them with hair from the hairdressers. The idea of kind of trying to find ways of describing community. And I've always been interested in using language and uh, using uh, the familiar 
imagery, imagery and the familiar items to kind of um, uh, connect with people because we don't have a massively uh, elite or polished uh, group of people in Ireland that attend exhibition visual art exhibitions. We're much more of a literary oral culture, but um, I, I, I really like kind of playing with the kind of duality of images. And this was a, a piece of work that I made before going to South America on a big research trip, um, interviewing and meeting with some of the mothers of the disappeared in Argentina. It's also the collar that um, was made a legal collar that was made in the shirt factories of Derry in the Northwest. And that is actually, uh, this is the Belfast burqa. Um, so I quite like, I, I quite like using humor in a, a, a kind of a disruptive and questioning way. Um, I think humor is a massively important part of the human psyche that's very underused in terms of um, history and politics. Um, this brings me on to the shirt factory project that I did up in Derry in 2013. Now, pretty much the fanciest and best shirts in the world were made in the shirt factories in Derry. Um, it's mentioned in Karl Marx's uh, manifesto that the mechanization of labor and the shirt factories of Derry, again, with mostly women a huge majority of women working and running those those shirt factories. Um, this is a hair shirt where I sewed flax back into a shirt. And the installation is actually in Conway Mill in Belfast, where they would have stood ankle deep in water as they wove um, the flax into linen. Um, these are incredible buildings now that are being kind of re-employed as art spaces. The laundry, this is, a, um, like I said, my drawings are something that I, that it's the first, uh, it's my first kind of response to kind of putting ideas together. And here, this is a kind of, um, the, the little skirt is like a hand grenade. The, 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 the supports for the washing lines are like petards. And there's a kind of a deeply historical and subversive thing going on here from the woman's harp hairdo right back to the kind of um, uh, mischievous goings on and the severed heads and baskets. Um, the drawings have always supplemented and, and um, supported the, the paintings and come through into different ways of um, bringing ideas forward. This is um, the laundry day in Belfast. As part of the Shirt Factory project, we created a laundry day where overnight we we um, we basically put four hundred shirts across William Street. Very simple, but the women of Derry appreciated and understood immediately uh, what was going on. The, uh, the, there is actually no. Uh, credit, no memorial, no statue, no no textile um, centre in Derry marking the women's contribution to the building of that city. So this was a kind of a celebration of shirts, recycled shirts, shirts that I got from um, secondhand shops. And sometimes the simplest things actually, you know, people can respond to them. And I think when you're making art, you have to be able to kind of bend in the wind a little bit in terms of reaching and engaging your your audience. I mean, that year I basically recreated a shirt factory, employed four women who could sew. And I came up with all sorts of ideas for kind of making things in that shirt factory that we could then you know, um, present as cultural product. Um, I got a lot of the shirts back down off the washing line. We cut the front off them. And we use that as the backing for this civil rights march uh, pillow. Um, and this was the poster. This is a reproduction of the poster that was used for the very first civil rights march in Derry. And it was kind of a very, very specific thing. Um, the idea of kind of not sitting on your sofa with 
with the comfort of a cushion, but getting up and actually going out into the street and taking part in a, a civil rights protest um, was kind of moving out of the comfort zone into kind of demanding justice. And at the very bottom, we have the metting, which is the typo um, from the original poster. So using digital uh, reproduction, it was, it was very interesting just being able to gather stuff that was already in existence and reproduce it and have women kind of working to kind of put it together with me so that we could present it as, a, as, as artworks. And um, it was actually very interesting because generally art exhibitions don't make any, any sort of financial, even cut even. And, and we were actually uh, being very industrious, very productive and funding other things through the success of some of the stuff I was designing. Um, in 2016, I was very fortunate to be, win one of the 10 national commissions. And basically, I, I the idea was to create a souvenir shop that felt like you were moving back in time to 2016. So I took on the ground floor of an old tenement building in Georgian Dublin. We closed over the shutters so you couldn't see the cars. And effectively, when you walked into this room, it was like going back into kind of a time around um, the revolution and the First World War. So I, I took a, a, very, dis, a very definite um, kind of perspective of, a, of someone who had grown up in Belfast, whose grandfather had died at the Battle of the Somme, whose mother my great uncles fought in a flying column in County Offaly. So when you realise in one family, there's a whole kind of uh, matrix of um, narratives from history that should be conflicting, but actually you can kind of weave them together in an artistic way and present a kind of a complete conversation between these domestic familiar artifacts. Um, we made aprons and I, I got the I worked with the ICA, which is the Irish Country Women's Association. On the left here, I think you can see the Carson marmalade. Um, just using kind of very uh, ordinary everyday products and things to kind of to, to engage people in creative activity, um, but also to kind of provoke thought. The Sisters of the Revolution was very fine. Uh, linen apron. I have all my linen for painting and elsewise comes from Baird McNutts in the north. They, they've been very generous and in sponsoring anything I um, I need in terms of fabric. I got women to knit. I designed a whole range of possible characters for this public play that we were doing and basically amazing women came in and they knitted all sorts of characters and figures and and it was great to actually engage with other women in this creative conversation. Some of them came up with great ideas and challenged some of the things that I was actually suggesting. Um, on kind of tea towel scale, we made, I took, I took quotations from various things. This is uh, from George Orwell, all war and propaganda, all the screaming, and lies and hatred come invariably from people who are not fighting George Orwell. Now, what I did was I actually wrote this out, then I packaged it up and I sent it off to various women who sat down and embroidered. Um, and, and we came together then to kind of put the stuff, um, you know, to find different ways of putting the stuff into the, the souvenir shop as product. This is um, using some of the back catalog of paintings that I had. Conley's shirt is in the National Museum, uh, complete with small blood stain. He had been injured in the uh, in the fighting, and um, they propped him up on a chair before they executed him. So the, the 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 actual fabric and original shirt is on display in the National Museum as a kind of a relic. And I'm always really interested in how garments are 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 presented like that. Um, and I've made numerous paintings of very, very specific um, textiles that belong to like Marie and Farrell's Parker jacket that she wore in Armagh. I came across that, I made a painting of it. And it's like, there's a sort of haunting in some of these 
garments. I, th I find it fascinating. Collins, um, as the Virgin of Guadalupe, you know, um, kind of playing with the kind of uh, the big iconic imagery of rebellion and nationalism and revolution and kind of spinning it round and bringing it through a different lens. We also made um, we also made a whole range of grave candles with some of this imagery. This one was one of the best sellers of the whole lot. And I packaged this as a kind of a sewing kit. Um, this is the Unite Ireland sewing kit. And basically the instructions are there on the right hand side and how to carefully kind of cut around the border. And then, you know, using small stitches kind of, you, you know, um, bring this dangerous territory together and congratulations, you've united Ireland. There's actually a rerun of all of this uh, design because of um, current uh, conversations that are going on in Ireland. Um, but the idea of encouraging people to sew rather than shoot, I think is actually quite positive. Uh, the project went to the United States, to the Mattress Factory Museum in Pittsburgh, and I mean, it went to Paris, it went to London, it, it's had several iterations, but this particular one in the mattress factory was very interesting because I was looking and paralleling the American civil rights movement with the civil rights movement in the North and older, you know, the, the kind of, uh, the fact that Frederick Douglass visited Ireland and met with Daniel O'Connor, the liberator, there's always been this kind of like symbiosis between the, the history and politics of African Americans and uh, the struggle for civil rights and uh, equality, and the same in the north of Ireland. On in the background there, you can see the civil rights march cushion, and I made a, an equivalent one for "I Have a Dream," Martin Luther King um, cushions, and I went around thrift stores in Pittsburgh and I got these lovely kind of golden tawny kind of like um, beautifully printed secondhand shirts. In the foreground, you can see a cabinet with kind of little dolls. And this, oh yeah, Harriet, Harriet Tubman made an appearance on some fine table linen. Um, I also made additionally um, a range of tea towels and I made portraits of, um, various people from the African-American community that um, that stepped out of history to me. There you can see, and there's a series of coal drawings here. I went, because it was Pittsburgh, I thought I would find coal. And eventually after much searching, I, I did manage to get some coal delivered. And I made these very white drawings on, on pieces of black coal. Um, the one thing that I would like to have done, this is a series of, you may recognize them. Um, these are the You Do Good Voodoo uh, Trump dolls. They were a best seller in uh, the souvenir shop in Pittsburgh. We had no complaints. I think there was only one woman who objected to it. Um, and the only thing I would really like to have done is to have had young African-American women working on the making of these. And I'm hoping to go to Columbia um, later in 2023 to work on a specific project with young African-American women, um, kind of doing a, a socially engaged project. Recycling textiles. This was a piece on the, the border between the North and South in a little village called Belcou. The bridge, the center of the bridge is actually the, the border, like the, the border is the river. And um, using t-shirts and old jumpers and all sorts of brightly colored um, discarded garments, we created a very soft border, um, li literally playing on the, uh, the idea of kind of cushioning this kind of hard, definite, um, difficult place. And this was just around the time of, um, the Brexit negotiations, and I worked with a group of traveller women who made the, the little dolls that we hung up above, the idea of people kind of trying to get from one place to another. 
Um, I mean, it's kind of a semi-detached village. On one side, you have Black Lion. On the other side, you have Belku. And, and effectively, you know, the butcher is in Black Lion. The grocery shop is in Belku. So you have to go from one side of the bridge to the other to do your shopping. It's a sort of a, a bit of a, a surreal situation. But um, this actually uh, went global and all the people kind of came along, various television crews and what have you. It gave them an opportunity to talk from their village about how their lives were going to be affected if Brexit went through. And of course, Brexit has gone through and there has been effect, but it hasn't been it hasn't been quite uh, what we expected. And finally, um, the Molotov milkman, um, quite often my ideas and um, notions come from literature. So I've been, I read Anna Burns's novel, The Milkman, which won the Brooker Prize. She's um, a woman from Ardoin in Belfast. And it's the first really major uh, piece of work that has given voice to the female experience in Belfast. So I'm looking forward to doing a collaboration with Anna Burns. And here we have um, a piece of antique um, Belfast linen and a Belfast milk bottle. And during riots, milk bottles were filled half up with <clears throat> petrol and a plug of cloth was put into them and they were flung, they were lit and then flung. This was a Molotov cocktail. Well, this is my Molotov milkman. And it's kind of, it's it's an interesting beginning to something. Um, and right now I'm actually working on the idea of uh, developing a woman, a women's plane made with cloth and in the old fashioned way, uh, in accordance with Lillian Bland's uh, plans for a plane, just the idea of kind of um, stepping off the earth and dreaming a little. Um, so cloth, fabric, collabor collaborations um, continue. That's the end of my presentation. Rita, thank you so much. Um, thank you so very much. It's, it's very extraordinary how you, how you, you know, bring bring all of this you know history and knowledge and um what i love so much about your work is that it is very community based and tactile and you know you you always have uh work that inspires people to either ask questions or to reach forward and to touch and to feel and so much around textiles and you know people's stories their history are brought to the foreground Thank you so much for that, Philip and Lee. Any any words of wisdom or comments from for Rita? Yeah, I'm um, happy to answer questions if anybody's. If I've, I I think, think it's very clear your work. It's uh, very beautiful how you use garments as uh, fragments of of a language of activism. Mm. You know, to acknowledge that uh, the garment is um, so much woven into society and therefore has such a power. It's very well shown here. It's very powerful. I like it very much. The installations are pretty, very beautiful. And I love how you use every bit of fabric. You know, you don't have you do, uh, every, any fabric, any find, you know, you know, there's sort of a hoarder finding all these things, all these textiles and all these ideas. It's quite fantastic. Thank you. Well, I think that's that's kind of part and parcel of the good housewife that you would not have anything go to waste. Okay. I mean, during the shirt factory project, my mother was in a nursing home that was run by nuns. And I came up with this idea of like the wet dishcloth. The wet dishcloth was something that you would reprimand a child in bygone times. It was a kind of like a, almost like a, a subversive weapon. I got the nuns in the old people's home to knit these cotton dishcloths. And we sold them in the in the, the shirt factory as I told you so. Ah. You know, the, you know, in terms of kind of really allowing language 
and and textiles to kind of fuse together that it, the way you know the intergenerational thing between women and as I get older I'm kind of finding this much more fun and mm-hmm. and, and embracing it much more yeah yeah it's a beautiful mixture of all these weapons yeah 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 and it's very interesting at the venice biennale this year out of 270 entries 230 were female i know phenomenal and so much of what was presented was kind of based in around traditional homemaking skills like using uh, recycled fabric from towels and petticoats and things you know just where we where we have for centuries celebrated uh the chip and deal furniture that men made and the the kind of the craftsmanship that men produced women somehow or other was kind of discarded or forgotten about and I, I kind of think there's something there's something to be said for the reclamation there but also rec- reclaiming how we actually function and hope to go forward in terms of using less and you and making what we need out of what we already have mm. absolutely yeah necessity <laughs> necessity rather than want you know what it is that we actually need but what we need to do now is move forward with our next speaker um <laughs> if uh, thank you very much, Rita. That was really wonderful. Thank you for sharing and really, you know, your work and You're your welcome. thoughts and your inspiration with us. It was really fantastic.